Hi everyone, I'm Rick Beato. On today's Everything Music, it's What Makes This Song Great, Episode 30. The artist is Alanis Morissette, and the song is You Oughta Know. Coming up next. You Oughta Know was the first single from Alanis Morissette's 1995 release, Jagged Little Pill. It was one of the most successful records of the 90s, selling over 16 million copies in the United States and over 33 million worldwide. It was produced by Glenn Ballard, co-written by Glenn and Alanis, and featured Flea and Dave Navarro from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. The record, incidentally, was also recorded on ADAT in one of the first and only huge hit records that I know of that was done on ADAT. Okay, before we get into the track, I'm going to tell you what makes this song great. The singing, the lyrics, the arrangement, the progression, the melody, the playing with Flea and Dave Navarro on it. So pretty much everything makes this song great. This is a really incredibly well done track. Let's get into the top. This is the beginning. I want so it starts out with a solo vocal, a, a kind of a drum loop. I Check it out. It's, it's really, I think it's a real. And then, the next loop comes in here. Do you notice there's a little bit of a drag here before it comes in? It's done on ADAT, remember. Listen to this. Because it wasn't done on grid, it actually sounds organic. It's not perfectly in time. There's also this little feedback sound that happens, sound effect that goes under the vocal and the drum loop. Check it out. I... That adds the atmosphere. You don't really notice it that much. You kind of hear it in there under the vocal, but that really gives it, that's like the pad that gives the atmosphere. And it has movement because it's not a static pad. That's what's nice about using feedback on a production level. You know, I'm always talking about things on production levels as well as, as what makes a song great because the songs aren't just great by themselves. The way that they're recorded also makes them have impact. So it's the performances, it's the production, it's the song, it's the melody, it's everything. And the way the way it's put together is incredibly important. The next section we have the entrance of Flea. Awesome jam right there. It's so, it's, it's so grooving. There's this really great guitar part that comes in with a tremolo here. I don't know if this is Dave Navarro. I'm thinking it might be Glenn Ballard. Check it out with a vocal here, so you can kind of hear how it works. I'm playing with the vocal and the bass. Listen. Here's with just the bass and the guitar. So this melody is F sharp Dorian. You got it. And the guitar part is... minor 7 to a B major over F sharp but it's really like I said it's F sharp Dorian the pre-chorus stays in F sharp Dorian the bass gets a little busier the guitar continues to be, be playing basically between an A major triad and a B major triad but that's still F sharp Dorian but the vocal melody does something really interesting I'm going to solo the vocals and the drums I want you to see what she's doing here you gave that we made wasn't able to make it up for the first thing that happens she says because the love because the love that you gave that we made goes right with the drum fill 
da da da. Check it out. That's just a little tiny detail that a producer would be really picky about. Now I want you to see about the accents in the vocals. So the vocal starts with a bunch of downbeat accents in the first phrase. The second phrase does all these upbeat accents. And because of those upbeat accents, it creates a rhythmic dissonance. Check it out. Cause the love that you gave that we made wasn't able to make it enough for you to be open wide. No. A lot of upbeats right here. And every time you speak her name, does she know Back to down. you told me it held me until you died? Till you died, but I am still alive, and I'm here. That's really great writing by putting those stresses in on the second half of the pre-chorus. Next, let's check out the bass and drums together. Like I said, the bass gets busier. He's still playing, you know, F sharps and E's, octaves, things like that. But he has some passing notes in there to, to describe the Dorian sound. Check it out. Then we're into the chorus where he goes into straight eighths. Another thing I want to point out is this almost a burst, reverb burst off the kick drums in the drum part. It's, it sounds like a drum loop. It sounds like it's a played drum loop. Check it out. And then along with that is this effects pad with this guitar part that moves between two chords. Check it out. The main guitar with the tremolo part gets a lot busier in the picking pattern, and you're going to hear a stereo pair of them playing slightly different things. Check it out. By the picking part being busier, it actually moves the track along even more. Next, we're out of the chorus. One of the things that makes the chorus great is that it has a pickup. The vocal melody begins before the chorus, so it's a lead-in melody. And I'm here. And it goes to the third of the F sharp. To remind you. And then that hits that A sharp on the E chord, which is really that Lydian note, which gives it tension. Remind you, remind you, fifth to the sharp four. When you have those tension notes, upper extensions, it really gives the melody a lot of power. And then we have a slight modulation. When she sings, of the mess you, she sings the A natural. So we've gone from hearing the A sharps, we're actually changing keys. We're going from B major to E major by the introduction of the A natural, which is a downward modulation, but it works great here. here Sharp 11. The, you, you away. Away. the seventh of the chord on the B major chord. So it's using really great notes of the chord. Different lyric. And then she does the uppy accents where she goes, Yo, 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 I don't know. And then the killer bass lick that Flea plays to lead us into the second verse. The bass is pretty straight playing eighth notes throughout the chorus, but the guitars, left and right guitars, do two different things. Here's the left part. It's straight power chords. The right part is this with a wah. Thank you. 
there's a power chord and then there's a wah part. So there's really four guitars going on. Now the wah, it's like a filter sweep is what a wah is. And it's wah, wah, wah. And it gives the chorus movement in that other speaker. Check them out together. Then we have the effects track that has a lot of feedback guitars and kind of um, sounds like a filtered uh, guitar in there as well. All that stuff really adds to the track. You don't even notice it in there, but. He goes, do, da, do, da. He's playing that. Playing the sus two on the F sharp chord. And that sus two is in there. It's hidden in the mix, but that adds to the tension of the track. Verse two enters with the greatest lick in the track is this bass fill right here, the flea plays. No! Yeah. Here it is, soloed. Listen to it. So simple, but it's amazing. It really just launches that second verse. Check it out. No. Yeah. Let's solo the vocals to hear the intensity in the second verse. This is a really great lyric in this song, but listen to her singing. It's amazing. No. You seem very well. Things look peaceful. I'm not quite as well. I thought you should know. Did you forget up? It sounds like it's one take. You can hear all the breaths sound really natural on it. She's an amazingly good singer. Incredibly good. There's no auto-tune, nothing like that. Here's the, the uh, auxiliary guitar parts in the second verse that, that are under the picking part. It's really strange. They're kind of hidden in there like a bed, but they're power chords. They've got the fifth in the bass, and it just kind of adds to the ambience of the track. The picking part is a little bit busier than it was in the first verse. Just the picking guitar part with the tremolo. Sounds the same. That's the same. Changes a little bit. And then, pre-chorus. I love the way that she enunciates I'm this. in the middle of dinner. There was a slap in the face. How quickly I was... Just the intensity of the vocal is really amazing. Once again, that's all one pass. That's just unbelievable singing. And then we're on to the pre-chorus. Cause the love that you gave that we made wasn't able to make it enough for you to be open wide. No. And then, no, it's only in one speaker and then it comes back. So you've got the vocals are hard pan. The double is more of a pop thing to do. In rock, you typically have a doubled vocal up the center. But I think this is really effective, especially when you have a single vocal there that's only in one channel. I think it gives an extra emphasis. Second half of the of the pre-chorus. So that pre-chorus is essentially the same with all the instruments as the first pre-chorus. But since this was not done with Pro Tools, there's no cutting and pasting. So the instruments needed to be played each time. It's not like you hear records nowadays where a guy plays one part for four bars. Oh, we'll take that. We'll move it over here on the grid and keep doing it. None of this stuff is like that. These are performances. Second chorus. That's really cool, that effects track there. Uh, the bass is still laying it down. Great apes. 
Guitars are doing the same thing. Drums hardly change through the whole song. Then we're back to the intro figure. Really spacey. Beautiful vocals here. All this uh, effects, feedback sounds, amazing. This is a great example of a Dorian song. And then we're on to the third chorus. Once again, you have this really cool effects part going on. Guitars are doing the same thing. That unison bend on F sharp. So on the F sharp chord, it's the root, then the, the ninth on this chord, then it's the sixth there, and then it's the, the fifth on that chord. So it's a great note to drone over all the chords. You hear it. It helps take this last chorus to another level. These are the kind of things that you add to excite the listener. Then. That's all for now. Please subscribe here to my Everything Music YouTube channel. If you're interested in the Beato book, go to my website at www.rickbeato.com. You can find it there. And remember to subscribe to my Instagram, which is rickbeato1. Thanks for watching.